Okay, so we started earlier talking about uh, uh, different assembly programming uh, methods. We talked about the move instruction, we talked about the increment and the decrement instructions, and now we want to, and we talked about the little Indian convention. We also talked about the different uh, variables we talked about type length and size okay and we said uh, what type will do what length will do and what size uh, will do we also talked about PTR operator which will override whatever operand we are dealing with then we uh, talked about an example on how to uh, deal with a string and we talked about load effective address also in the previous class and uh, how to deal with indirect operands and we stopped over here on how to do or how to add 8-bit integers now when we deal with 8-bit integers you need to keep always in mind that the data is defined as underscore underscore integer 8 and when you define an underscore underscore integer 8 this means that your data is 8 bits and it's this is the easiest method to deal with data now if we have an array okay if we have an array which is called a list and it is defined you want me to share right yes okay if we have an array which is called a list and it is of type underscore underscore integer 8 this means that the data will be stored something like this we will have three memory locations the first location will have 10 the second will have 20 the third will have 30 and our index is 0 1 2 and our beginning address is at a list so if I say uh, load If I say load a list, a load effective address of a list in bx, this means the address where the first location will be stored will be now in ebx. So ebx has the address for the first location. Does not have the value. It does not have the value. It has the address of the location. Then we say move ebx to al. That means move whatever is in the memory location specified in EBX into AL. Because AL is 8 bit, and remember, A list is defined as underscore integer 8. So we can move whatever in that memory location into AL. Increment EBX, this means go to the next location add ebx to al now we are going to add whatever is in memory location ebx specified by ebx into al result will be stored into al so we have 10 plus 20 which is 30 then add to uh, increment ebx now we are at 30 add 30 to the contents of al which is 30 now al will contain 60 which is 30 plus 30 then load the effective address of sum into ESI which is the, so the uh, source index then move whatever is in AL into the memory location specified by ESI so this is how to add the three locations if it was underscore integer 8 now the difference if it was 16 First of all, we define the variable as short instead of underscore underscore integer 8 and the data will be stored something like this. If I want to check the memory, then my memory will be having the following. So I will have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 locations of course this zero is somewhere over here six and seven because i have this zero over here so here is zero zero 
1010 0020 0030 0000 0000 0000 0000 0000 0000 now load effective address of word list into ebx so ebx will have the uh, address for the first location move ebx into ax so ax will have 1000 remember we are going to move the 10 first then the 00, zero. then we add 2 so we go to the next location which is at 2 then we add 4 so we go to this location and finally we store at our result at location number 6 that's why we add 2, 4, and 6 to the location. Okay. Remember, AX is having the uh, address of EBX. So we add 2, we add 4, and we add uh, 6 to ABX. This is basically the uh, whole uh, idea. So um, this is how you access. This is EBX. This is EBX plus 2, this is EBX plus 4, this is EBX plus 6. Remember, we are using a short. Short means 16-bit integers. And in 16-bit integers, it means we need two memory locations to store all uh, each uh, data. In 32-bit integer, which is defined as an integer over here, when you see integer, it is 32 bits. This means each location will have... Um, each value will be stored in four memory locations. So over here, if I want to store my data, I will have something like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sorry and 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 for the zeros which is sorry I need to write it in a better way which will be 12 13 14 and 15 now my data will be 0 0 10 0, 0, 30. Then, 0, 0, 20. 0, 0, sorry, uh, uh, 20. Yes, then, 0, 0, A, 0, which is the last one. Then, 0, 0, 0, C. Then, 0, 0, 10, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0. This is how your data will be distributed inside the memory. So first of all, we load the effective address of word. So the effective address is pointing over here. We move whatever is in that address into EAX. So the contents of EAX is having uh, this number. We add to EBX four so ebx will be over here now we add four so it is over here we start from zero we add four it is over here then we move we add sorry this value to eax now eax will have this one plus this one we add to eax uh, ebx again plus eight we and add the result into eax so we add the third number and then store the result basically into ebx plus 12 which is the, this value over here so the only idea is when you have uh, underscore underscore integer 8 which is an 8 bit you add in once you do increment when you have short which is 8 bits you add by 2 when you have integer which is 32 bits uh, sh sorry short which is 16 bits you add by 2 and when you have an integer which is 32 bits you add in fours so the 32 bit registers any of the following registers to be used as indirect operands so we have eax ebx ecx edx esi edi and e 
base pointer all of them you can use them for indirect addressing mood now in a two-dimensional array we talked about one dimensional array but if you have a two-dimensional array as you recall in uh, like we did in C++ the the array will be stored uh, all in uh, one sequence so this will have no effect uh, on our uh, data so basically you can see here that I have an underscore underscore integer 8 which is a size of 2 by 5 array which is two rows and uh, five columns so the my array will have something will be looking something like this one two three four five one two three four five this is your array but when it comes to be stored inside the um, uh, computer it is very important to um, know the array the row size because the data will be stored all together and if you don't know what is the array size or the row size it is very difficult to distinguish which row you are in so you can see over here we uh, defined an array which is underscore integer uh, 8 array of 2 and 5 and it has some values now when it is stored the first location which is let's assume it's at 200 so it will have the 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 data then the next part over here will be coming starting at 205 which is the size of the array so this is how you access the second row and first row and column now the base index uh, operands uh, for example add the value of the base register to an index register producing an effective address of 100 and uh, sorry uh, 157 assume that ebx is 155 and ESI is basically uh, 2 so if my base index or register BX is pointing at 155 if I add to it an index register such as SI I will be at 157 this will help me to move around uh, in my array and keeping the base register saved the value instead of keeping adding the numbers to the base uh, registers um, this is this is quite uh, easy and simple to move around in the registers so um, here we have an array which is of size 3 by 5 okay so 3 rows 1 2 3 rows and 5 columns the row size is 5 so load effective address of eb of array into ebx so ebx register will be holding the location for the first address remember it's an underscore underscore integer 8 so this means each one will be stored in one location add row size to ebx so if i add to row size to ebx so ebx will be 0 plus 5 it will be pointing over here this is the second row move s to si2 so my si is 2 add to ebx si plus 2 so ebx will have uh, 5 plus 2 it is 7 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so I will be giving my value of uh, 80 uh, hexadecimal to my uh, values so the array is at 105 this is just basically over here the array is at 150 plus 5 this means we are over here plus 2 we are over here so the value is 80 it's the same one over here but this is without the addressing we can jump immediately remember you need to start counting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 now if um, if my array is of type uh, short then you will be having 0 2 4 6 8 10 and so on as you're counting and your row size in this case will be uh, twice the actual value now the index values the memory is a byte addressable remember all the memory is byte addressable when we talk about the memory this is my memory each memory location is having one byte so this is let's say address 0 this is address 1 address 2 address 3 address 4 address 5 and so on 
So each location will be having an address of uh, having an, uh, uh, a capacity of one byte. Thus, all indices, displacement, and offsets are given in bytes. Successive byte array variables are referred to by adding one. If you have an array which is of size show a byte which is underscore underscore integer eight then you move around by adding or decrement increment or decrement of one if it's a word array then you add or decrement of two if it's a double word array then you add and uh, increment or decrement in fours this is in double word which is this is 32 bits this is 16 bits and this is an 8 bit because remember it's a byte the byte is 8 bits the word is 16 bits and a double word is basically 32 bits this keep it keep it uh, in mind so when you talk about byte you move in one when you talk about uh, word you move in two when you talk about double word you move in uh, fours okay so now we will start talking about loops and jumps. The first jump instruction is basically a normal jump instruction. It's called an unconditional jump. Okay. When you want to jump, you need a label. Let me show you. So if I go here to my emulator, Okay, this is the emulator. If I say origin 100 hexa, and then I will say a simple code move to AX um, 40 hexa, then you need something called a label. Label you can call it any name. I will call it this label. I will call it comp3300 two dots. Okay. I will call it any name. I will call it course code. Okay. Then I will say um, before that, let me move. Sorry, move to BX20 hexa. And inside here, I will say add ax comma bx. Then I will jump, jump to comp three three zero zero. Okay. Now any jump, this is an unconditional jump because I just said jump, and I will jump to a label. A label عبارة عن any name you will give followed by two dots. Or a colon okay followed by a colon or two dots so uh, when I emulate first of all you can see my program is running fine I will go single step I move to ax 40 then I will move to bx 20 I will add ax to bx and store the result into ax so ax will contain 60 then I will jump to comp 3300 whatever the name is i will jump to it so over here you can see i'm going to jump to 06 hexa 06 hexa is basically this instruction over here if you can see my mouse i'm going to jump over here this is 06 اللي هو address i will write yes i will add a label with any name but the compiler will not take that name it will look at the address where i added that label so see over here I jump to 06 hexa and I'm going to once more add to ax bx so my ax will continue I will add another 20 then I will jump once more to 06 see jump to 33 comp 3300 comp 3300 comes where comp 3300 comes at over here at instruction 06 so I will jump to instruction 06 which is this one over here which contains 
a add a x b x if i run my program you can see my program is running to infinity because it's an unconditional jump and it will keep incrementing in twos until the um, um, register is full with f f f and then it will overflow and after it overflows it will uh, start counting in uh, negative i think let's see it will reach f f f f so and it started all over again okay it will go into an infinite loop so i can stop this one and can go back to the jump instruction so when you say jump jump you need a label loop we will talk about it we have a separate lecture for loop loop is uh, an instruction that creates a loop using cx so if let me just give you an example on a loop instead of jump i will say loop okay but loop you need a counter loop you need a counter you will i will say move to cx5 hexa now if i run my program um, okay sorry let's move not move move okay so if i run my program you'll see a single step single step i move 20 i move 40 i move to cx5 add ax bx and then loop loop means what check is cx greater than zero yes jump to label and decrement cx is cx less than zero if yes jump to label and decrement cx so i will decrement cx cx is four and then i will jump to label which will take me over here once more i will keep doing this decrementing cx as you can see over here with my mouse cx is decrementing every time until cx reaches zero once cx is zero i will exit the loop and my program will finish so the difference over here is we have a counter that will keep counting the uh, number uh, that will keep counting the number of times we do the instruction until we are done of course we can go into an infinite uh, loop by doing a program which is again Dekaru. this is not an intelligent uh, programming okay this is using um, assembly so if i just take the initialization of cx and put it inside the loop what will happen my program will keep changing the value of cx every time we go in it's always changed to five and if i run we go into an infinite loop so you need to be careful how where you place your uh, uh, numbers because if you place your counter or cx somewhere wrong this will give you a problem once more cx is involved in many different things so you need to always make sure that the value of cx does not change as you write your programs now loop automatically uses cx as the counter by default okay so um it will decrement cx automatically if cx is greater than zero loops transfers to the label so we need to check if cs is greater than zero if cx is equal to zero then we are not going to uh, enter the loop uh, um, uh, once more it's not like um, um, it's not like c++ where you can put the condition before the uh, before the loop because as you saw in my program okay as you saw in, in my program over here loop came at the end okay loop came at the end so whatever i did here is looping so it's something like uh do while it's something like do while you will do the execution one time at least and then you uh, check for the uh, condition so otherwise the execution drops through the next instruction for example 
sum the integers from 1 to 5 move to cx5 which is 1 2 3 4 and 5 5 numbers move to ebx1 move to eax0 add eax plus ebx increment ebx ebx will be equal to 2 okay then increment ebx loop l1 so uh, let's follow the execution of this program so i can uh, do a whiteboard over here So uh, my program is basically move to, um, I will use CX5, move to BX1, move to AX0, this is my label L1, add AX, BX, increment BX, loop, L1. So let's go through this program one step at a time. So over here will give us CX is equal to 5, BX will equal to 1, AX will equal to 0. Now add AX, BX. Okay. So first we are going to add AX, BX. So AX, now AX is equal to 1 bx will equal to 2 loop l1 loop l1 if sorry loop l1 decrement cx if cx is greater than 0 jump to label now, what is the value of CX? CX will equal to 4. So CX will equal to 4. Is 4 greater than 1? Yes, we are going to jump to label. Now, in label, we are going to add 1 plus 2. Okay? So we are going to add AX will equal to 1 plus 2, which is 3. BX will equal to 4 cx will decrement cx will equal to 3 is 3 greater than 0 yes we are going to go once more ax is equal to 7 bx is equal to 5 cx is equal to 2 is 2 greater than 0 yes we are going to add uh, 5 plus 7 which is equal to 12 so ax will equal to 10 a b 11 c bx is equal to um, 6 okay cx is equal to uh, bx is equal to 6 cx is equal to uh, 0 is 0 less than uh, sorry is cx is equal to 1 Is 1 um, greater than 0? Yes, we are going to add 6 plus C. 12 plus 6 is 18. 18 is equal to uh, AX will equal to um, C, which is 6 plus 18. 10 is uh, 16, 11, 12. BX is equal to 7. CX is equal to 0 cx will equal to zero now over here the result we got is eax is equal to f bx is equal to six cx is equal to seven so what did i do wrong what did i do wrong so it is supposed to ax is equal to f which is 15 so one plus two over here okay 
1 plus 0 1 1 plus 2 is uh, 3 3 plus 4 is 7 and 7 plus uh, 5 is 12 why did we get 0 f why did we get zero? it's very easy if we do it the other way let's go through the program it's very easy okay let's do it through the program so in the program it says the following in the program move to cx5 move to bx1 move to ax0 then l1 and then add ax bx increment bx loop l1 and let's run so we start with cx oops we start with cx equal to 5 then we add to bx1 ax is equal to 0 add ax bx 1 plus 5 is 6 sorry 1 plus 1 is 1 increment bx so we have 2 loop l1 now loop l1 we will decrement cx by 1 cx will be decremented by 1 so cx is equal to 4 bx is equal to 2 ax is equal to 1 now add 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 then we increment bx by 3 and we add to cx we decrement cx by 3 so all of them will have 3s now did we get this result where did we go wrong so 3 3 are ah, here this one should be 3 okay this is this is the wrong part so 3 plus 3 then it will go to 6 not 7 okay so let's continue from the program it's much more uh, convenient so 3 3 3 is 3 greater than 0 yes so uh, 6 3 plus 3 is 6 then we increment it we get 4 we decrement cx it's equal to 2 is 2 greater than 0 yes then jump a a here 10 here 6 plus 4 is uh, 10 then 5 5 um, uh, when we reach 5 we have cx is equal to 2 now cx is equal to 1 is 1 we remember we decrement first is 1 greater than uh, 0 yes then we add a plus 5 which is f then uh, increment bx bx is equal to 6 then decrement cx cx is equal to 0 is 0 greater than 0 no and we are going to exit so the right answer is f 6 and cx and in, in my solution over here what we did wrong was this is 3 3 3 so this one will be 6 this one will be 4 then this is 2 this is this one will be 10 this one will be 5 this one will be 1 this one will be 15 this one will be 6 and this one will be 0 so this is the only mistake we did but other than that the answers should be all in the same way this is how you use the loop functions inside the um, in inside assembly language now another example is to some integer array now this integer array remember this is an integer this means it is 32 bits and 32 bits it's not like jumping over here we used previously we uh, just increment or decrement to go through values but over here we need to add by 4 you can do it in many different ways but here you can see we moved to EAX 0 load effective address of the array into EDI now EDI destination address destination index sorry will have the address of the first location move to ECX the length of array if you remember we uh, used a function previously which is called length you can use length or you can simply one two three four you can put here move to cx4 add the contents of edi into eax add the 
type a type remember it will return the size in bytes of each element so you can either add to edi the type or you can add four لانه this is an integer array and it will have each memory location will contain 32 bits which is four uh, bytes so you can add four and loop l1 to finish up the story for this part over here so this is this part i uh, will stop now over here and i will continue at one o'clock with the second part of our class for